In this example, we're going to solve three different types of percentage questions. And it turns out that every applied percentage problem fits into one of these three categories. Because a percentage really compares two numbers. And if you look here, there's a comparison between two numbers each time. So for instance, in part B, we're comparing 40 and 150, and the percentage is unknown. But in part A, we're comparing an unknown number and 690, and the percentage is known. And in part C, we're comparing eight and an unknown number, and 62 is the percentage. So in each case, we're comparing two numbers with a percentage. So there are three parts to every problem, and one of those parts will be unknown every time. So by doing these three problems, we'll see all the different possibilities because in each case, we have the unknown part in a different place. So in part A, the first number is unknown. In part B, the percentage is unknown. And in part C, the second number is unknown. So once we've done these three, all the other percentage problems that we can do will fit the pattern of one of these three. Let's start with part A. Part A says, what is 75% of 690? And remember, when we see the what, the unknown piece, we'll just replace that with x. And then when we see the word is, remember that that's like equals, because saying that something is the same as something else is the same that it's equal to it. And then we have 75%. And then of represents multiplication. So 75% of 690 means that we'll multiply 75% and 690. Now to do the calculation, we need to convert 75% to a decimal. So we can divide 75 by 100 or just move the decimal point two places to the left, which gives us 0 0.75. And then all we have to do is multiply 0 0.75 times 690. Let's go over to the calculator and do that. So we want 0 0.75 times 690. And we get the answer 517.5. So the answer to part A is that 517.5 is 75% of 690. On to part B. Part B asks 40 is what percentage of 150? So we'll do the same thing we did on the first one. 40 is gets replaced with equals. The what now is the percentage, so we'll replace that with x, the unknown, and then times 150 of 150. Now to solve for x, we need to divide both sides by 150. So we get 40 divided by 150 equals x. So we need to go back to the calculator and divide 40 by 150. Forty divided by 150 is about 0.27. Now the answer we have is a decimal, but the question asked what percentage. So rather than giving the answer in decimal form, we really should give it as a percentage since that's how the question was asked. So we'll say x equals 26.7%. So the answer to part B is that 40 is 26.7% of 150. Then for part C, 8 equals 62% of what? Now to solve for x, we're going to divide both sides by 62%. But before we do, we should write 62% as a decimal. Because remember that every time we do a calculation, we should have decimals in the calculation instead of percentages. Percentages are meant for displaying the number, not for doing calculations. So first we'll write this as 8 equals 0 0.62 times x, and then divide both sides by 0 0.62. So we need to divide 8 by 0 0.62. 8 divided by 0 0.62 gives us about 12.9. And we could be picky with how far we round this, but we won't worry about it too much for now. We'll just say 12.9. So the answer to part C is that 8 is 62% of approximately 12.9.
Again, once you can do all these three problems without too much trouble, any percentage problem you run across will fit into one of these categories and will follow the same pattern.